guys, Tiffany here from Tiffany Gordon Cosplay with a cosplay tutorial on how I made Alice's sword from the anime Sword Art Online Alicization. And if you'd like to make your own Alice sword, I have a 2D blueprint as well as a 3D CAD STL file available on my website www.tiffanygordoncosplay.com or see the link in the description. And for me, for making this sword, I first started off by making my 2D lines in Adobe Illustrator and then imported them into a 3D modeling program called Rhino 6, where I first started off by extruding my center guidelines to the height that I wanted the sword to be. And slowly started to build out each section of the sword using lines and so that way it looked like a giant wire formed version of the sword. And once the base line work was done, I could then use the two rail sweep tool and then start to puzzle piece each of the pieces together. And when that section was done, I could mirror it to the other side of the sword. I repeated the same process for pretty much the entire sword, doing each section individually. And when I was happy with what the top half of the sword looked like, I could mirror it to be the same on the bottom. And for some of the detailed floral pieces, I ended up extruding the section so it would be on both sides to the height that I wanted. And when I was happy with how the sword looked, I attached each of the pieces together using the Bulin tool, which will then make your entire sword one solid piece. The next step is going to be adding where the carbon fiber tubing is going to be inserted into the sword pieces after it is 3D printed. It is very important to have a inner bone structure inside your 3D printed swords because they are very likely to come apart if they are just glued together. So you want something to hold all the pieces and have a spine. And to do this, I got the measurement of my carbon fiber tubing, the length and the width, and then made the exact measurements in CAD. And then I offset that just a little bit so that way you have enough room for your tubing to fit inside the 3D printed pieces and not be too snug, as well as have room to put glue to attach all of your pieces together. In total, I had five different pieces for this sword. One that went halfway down the sword and then through the handle, as well as two smaller ones in the hilt part, and then two longer ones that went the length of the blade. The very last step for doing the 3D modeling work on this sword is to section off into pieces that will fit on your printer bed for the height and the width and then arranging them in the way that would fit best on a printer. And for this, I ended up splitting up the sword into eight different pieces. Four for the blade, one for the handle, one for the pebble, and then two for the hilt pieces. And once all of that was done, I could print it on my Prusa i3 Mark 2.5 3D printer, and I printed everything in PLA filament. Now that everything is printed, it is time to start doing cleanup. And I first use a combination of wire cutters, uh, pliers, and files, and a bunch of different things to remove the support structure, as well as to open up the holes just a tiny bit. And of course, for 3D printing, you always have the lines on the edges of your printed pieces, or what I like to call is stair steps. And to clean this up, I used a combination of some buffing wheels and everything at my workbench. This is just the first part that I do to kind of help knock down any of the edges that are a little bit higher, or if there's any kind of gunk up on the printed parts. The next step is going to be attaching all of your sword pieces together. And again, we're going to be using carbon fiber tubing to use as the inner bone structure for each of these pieces. And to do this, I first cut each of the carbon fiber tubing to the exact length that I wanted, and then I used a 120 grit sandpaper to rough up the entire surface of the carbon fiber tubing. It's important to do that because your epoxy for gluing the pieces together will actually not really attach to a smooth surface. So this gives the carbon fiber tubing a little bit more of a rough surface to make sure you have a really nice gluing surface for attaching. And then it's time to glue! And for this I use epoxy and the first part that I glued together was the pummel, the hilt, and the top part of the sword. These are all the pieces that are con connect in the center carbon fiber tube hole. 
And after waiting 24 hours for that section to dry, I then went to attach the hilt parts of the sword, gluing the small little pieces of carbon fiber tubing to either side of the pieces and attaching them to the main part. And again, waited another 24 hours for that section to dry, and then I could attach the rest of the sword blade pieces at once. And you'll want to make sure to attach all of the pieces with both of the rods in at once, so that way you don't have issues. I highly recommend inserting the carbon fiber tubing throughout all of the pieces before gluing them to make sure that you do not need to open up any of the holes or you don't have a little booger from the 3D printer on the inside. And here's what the sword should look like once all of the pieces are fully assembled and glued together. And for me, when I epoxy my pieces together, I would rather have more epoxy that seeps out of the edges to make sure that you a really strong fit together. And so I do tend to have a little bit of extra epoxy coming out of the seams. And for cleaning this up, I use a sanding drum, just lightly sanding it down so it is flat. Side note, you need to make sure you either have a vacuum to suck up all of the dust coming off from sanding this, or wear a respirator while doing this. You do not want to breathe in or inhale any of the PLA filament debris. Now for even more stair step removal. And for this, I use Adapt's flexible spackling, as well as wearing a glove and a little bit of water, applying the material onto the entire surface of your printed pieces. This will fill all of the gaps or any seams. If you have any of the stair stepping, this will kind of fix all that. And once it's dry, you can sand it away so it's nice and flat. And for even more stair step removal to make your piece really, really smooth and flat, I use sandable primer, applying a heavy coat to the entire sword. And once it was dry, again, sand. Now time for painting, and for this we're going to be using Createx Colors Wicked Color Airbrush Paint Line, as well as using my Iwata Eclipse Airbrush Paint Gun. And the first part is doing our base coat of black onto the entire sword, and then went in with gold chrome onto the handle part. And when that section was dry, I then masked it off and then did a mix of pyro orange and gold chrome applying this paint color to the entire rest of the sword. And now for detailing. In all these pieces, I'm still gonna be using airbrush paint, but I'm gonna be applying it by hand with a paintbrush. And the first color I'm gonna start off with is white, applying it to all of the diamond pieces as well as the flower pieces on the sword. And then used a daylight blue for the section just underneath the hilt, as well as a couple of pieces on the handle. And the last little bit of detail painting I'm gonna do is with black, using it to apply around all of the edges of each of the pieces. This is really gonna make the anime-like style pop for this sword. And the very last step for this sword is to seal all of your paint. And for this, I used Createx Colors UVLS Clear Satin, applying an even coat onto the entire surface of the sword with a paintbrush. And that is how I made the sword for my Alice cosplay from the anime Sword Art Online Alizization. Big thank you for watching this cosplay tutorial and I hope you found it helpful for your next build. And if you did, press the like button, comment, and let me know what you thought about it, as well as subscribe to the channel. And a big thank you to my Patreon supporters who helped fund this video, and I will see you for our next cosplay tutorial. Much love, guys!